Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference ahead of our game against Granada in the Europa League quarter-final second leg. So I'm going to give you the questions he was asked and I'm going to give you his responses to them questions. So, Solskjaer says Manchester United have to play well, dominate and score goals in Thursday night's second leg against Granada, despite already holding a two-goal advantage. Solskjaer also gives his thoughts on Jesse Lingard's stunning form on loan at West Ham and on leadership within the squad. So anyway, let's get into it. So, this was the first question that was asked to Ollie. It's reassuring to know that your son is always being fed, but that's not what I want to ask about. You've got three players suspended. Is that enforced rest a positive thing? All his response to that was, no, it's never a positive thing to not have every player available. But we've got players ready to... deputise and come into the team of course it was amnesty on yellow cards previously picked up after this quarter final so we hoped to get them through but it was some easy yellow cards should we say that the referee handed out so that was all his response to that yeah uh, luke shaw harry Maguire, and scott mctominway are suspended for this game unfortunately so this was the second question. Obviously, the Real Sociedad game was more sorted for the second leg. United had won the first game 4-0. You named a strong side, but are you going to rotate a bit more now? Will Axel Tuanzebe get a chance? All his response to that was, we have to make sure that we go through. I always pick a team that I think will win a game, and I will. We will go into this game want wanting to win this. I know Granada will want to come and give it there all but we want to improve on our performances build on the momentum that we're on and have a good performance there'll be a few changes of course some of them are forced some of them are maybe rotation this is another question hi Ollie you mentioned easy yellow cards last week would you look at leaving people like Paul Popper out because a booking would see him miss the semi-final. All's response to that was, we're not looking at cons consequences of that, no. We're going to the game having to do everything we need to do to win. If there's a tackle there to be won, a tackle is there to be won. We don't want any lazy yellow cards. Just play the game properly. No token gestures and you'll be fine. Uh, that's the response from Molly to that question. This is another question. Obviously, simulation was a topic of the weekend. I just wonder if managers are in danger of laying themselves open to hypocrisy because, like it or not, every squad has a player that will simulate and you've had accusations of that towards Bruno. So is it incumbent on managers to tell their players not to dive? So all his response to that was, every manager has certain values. When I got sent off against Newcastle a few years ago, many, many years ago, many moons ago, and I thought I did the right thing for the club or the team. And Sir Alex Fergus, and Sir Alex absolutely lambasted me after the game, called me into the office and said, we don't win that way, Man United. I've lived by that ever since. We want to win. We want to win in the right manner. It doesn't matter who we're playing against. I want to win playing by the book. I'm not saying someone else doesn't. I'm just saying that I think every manager wants to win in a fair way. So that's uh, another fair response from Ollie. <laughs> now, this question is regarding Jesse Lingard. So says, hi Ollie. Just with regard to Jesse Lingard, I believe he's now scored eight goals in nine Premier League appearances, which is a decent record by any standards. When he comes back to the club, does he have a future at Man United? 
would you like to offer him a new contract? And also, related to that, why do you think he has worked so well at West Ham? This is a fairly long response for Molly. So Ollie said, Jesse has been brilliant since he left, and I've answered this quite a few times. Selfishly, we could have kept him because he's always got a part to play. Jesse is a fantastic lad around the place, Man United through and through, never once did he moan or cause me a problem. He just came in and worked really hard. He deserved a chance to play for more football, that's why we let him go to West Ham because he deserves a chance for what he's done throughout his life for Man United, of course. We will welcome him back. I hope he will go to the Euros, because with his performances now, with the confidence he's got, I don't think that's beyond him. I hope he's got a strong finish to the league. It was different here, because Bruno Fernandes, the form he's played in, arguably in Jesse's favourite position... And that was just a decision that we've made. Delighted though for Jess and just wish him all the best for the rest of the season until he comes back. So basically Solskjaer is saying that Jesse Lingard has a future at Manchester United and Solskjaer confirms that Man United want Jesse Lingard back. Um, it said uh, the other week that we set our asking price for Jesse Lingard. It's £30 million. Pounds. And it says we was interested in a swap deal involving Jesse Lingard and Declan Rice. And it also mentioned that we had the advantage in Jesse Lingard transfer talks because West Ham did say they'll do whatever it takes to get Lingard permanently. You know, Lingard went out on loan to West Ham in January and he's made a fantastic impact since he's gone there. You know, it's his, is it his fifth loan spell now because before he's had loan spells with Leicester, Birmingham, Brighton and Derby. But we loaned Lingard out because he was frozen out of the squad. But it actually said earlier on this season that way was open to a sensational return for Lingard and it says we could give him a new three-year contract. But anyway, now this question is regarding Eric Bay. Is Eric Bay back in the country and he's, is he available for tomorrow night's game? So, short response for Molly. Eric's not available for tomorrow, no. He's travelled back, yeah. Um, obviously, Eric Bay has been out with covid Eric Bay has actually lost his place in the team. I like Bay a lot. He is a very, very good centre-half. He intercepts the ball well. He shows the ability to play out from the back. He can be effective in the air. My only element of concern about Bay is injury-prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. Now, it said the other week that we set our asking price for Eric Bay, it says we will let him leave for just £17 million. And it said Inter Milan were interested. He said the other week that contract talks were on hold with Eric Bay because Bay wants assurances over his playing time. He said a few weeks ago that Eric Bay apologised to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his Man United teammates for his disrespectful behaviour. Because he said that Bay was furious with Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted by him. And Bay believes that we're offering him a new contract to simply increase his asking price. I think Bay's got like 14 months left on his current contract. Uh, now, this is another question. You go into this game as huge favourites after the 2-1 win last week but with your experience going into second legs as favourites having a comfortable lead what is going to be the biggest challenge tomorrow and what things do you have to be aware of so all the response to that was you know we've got a great foundation to play from and a good result but we go into this game wanting to win the game we want to play a good game and perform well we know that Granada will come here and give it everything 
they've got. So we have to go out there, try to dominate the ball, score goals like we always want to do and keep carrying on. The momentum is big in football and if it goes for you, it goes for you. So we just want to carry on there and hopefully the players will enjoy the game. Now this is another question. I wanted to ask you about what sort of game you expect from Granada. In the first leg, they sat back a little bit. They didn't try and push. But now, in the state of the tie, they have to score goals. What do you expect from them? So all the response to that was, well, it's a quarter-final in Europe, so of course they need to score goals. The way they want to create chances and score goals, I cannot predict, of course, but we've seen them against Barcelona and Real Madrid and seen how dangerous they have been. We have to play a very good game. If they come and press us, we have to be ready for that. If they sit back and it's more counter-attack, we have to play a good game and not give them those opportunities. It's all up for grabs. Uh, this question is regarding Axel. So it says, Axel had such a good start to the season particularly the game against PSG. Over the last couple of months, there's been abuse on social media. Has that affected his confidence? Have you had to put your arm round him? All his response was, Axel has always been a very positive boy and hard working. Victor and Harry have played and they've formed a very good partnership. Eric's come in and played really well when he's played so his Axel's chances have been limited but he's been training well and he's ready for this opportunity I don't think it affected him back when it happened no so that was all his response to that So this was another question. You're missing two key leaders in Harry and Scott McTominway. How do you feel about the leaders coming through at United and a word on the team spirit as well, having gained 28 points from losing positions this season and the incredible turnaround after half-time at Spurs? So Ollie's response to that was, this is a pretty long, pretty long response. We are a group of young players who want to improve want to learn and we know that we'll have to lead at some point. Everyone had to lead at some point. We've got different ways of promoting leaders. Of course, you've still got a few leaders here with those players out, so I'm not worried about that. The team spirit always goes in front of any individual. I've not seen many teams where they're, where that is not true. I'm sure the team spirit in... The Argentina World Cup 1990 was good as well. But they had one superstar in Maradona who was better than everyone else. But for us, it's a group working together, knowing that we need everyone to be on board on our values, on our set behaviours. Man United have always got humble, hard-working players who stick together and never, ever give in. In any game, as you said, 28 points from losing positions is fantastic. On the other hand, it's ruining we have to do that. This was the second question. With the Euros coming up in with the Euros coming up this summer, potentially it could be a little bit more complicated transfer window because of the Euros. Do you see any business being done before the Euros kick off, either in or out? So all his response to that was well, the transfer window will come when it comes. I'm just focusing on finishing the league strong. We have too many important games to finish and to win. But of course, I think everyone in this job would like to do deals as soon as possible. But at the moment, my sole focus is on winning games. So that was Ollie's response to that one. This was another question. Hi, Ollie. I believe you're the only team in the Premier League to have a fixture every midweek, basically, all season. And obviously... This is another midweek where you're playing. How difficult is that to manage in terms of fitness of players and obviously selections? Does that put you at an 
disadvantage at all or do you just accept that's what life is like at Man United? So all your response was, um, long response, you have to accept that at Man United we've been in a position or situation where we could think about this game as a given and maybe take a risk. We've needed results in more or less every game, which is a good way because then your coaching sessions are in the games really. What we've lacked and missed out on is the hours on the training ground. We haven't had that because we've had injuries. Sometimes you haven't had the squad fully fit. So that's made it more difficult. But as a Man United player, you need to be able to play around that. About, well, I think we've played 50 games now this season. It's something you want to and have to get used to. Maybe the biggest challenge was the lack of pre-season because normally you'd practice a few different ways of playing in pre-season, but we only had that one game against Aston Villa and we needed to get the fitness. Since we played West Brom just before the project restart in a friendly, that's the last time we could play a game and try something different. You know tactics without thinking about the result. So, of course, that's been a challenge, but I can't complain because I think the players have been fantastic and I'm so impressed by them. Now, this is towards the end of the press conference. This question is, do you feel the players' mentality has changed in many ways since you look, since you took charge? And if so, what ways have you worked to do that? So all the response to that was, it's not up to me to say if their mentally, if their mentally has changed, if their mentality, sorry, has changed. My job or, or our job has been to get the best out of the players and that's how you do that. It's different in every coaching style, management style, I can feel change in the belief and the confidence because, say, two years back when we started this project, rebuilding the squad, we knew we had a few months or seasons to learn. And they've learned on the job, many of them, but now you can see the focus going on. We want to win a trophy. We want to go as far as we can. The disappointment of last year's semi-final defeats have done something to the mentality of the group, definitely. This was the final question of the press conference. You won all three matches away in the competition, have yet to win at home in it, and away form in the Premier League is better than the home form. Why is this happening? So all his response to this final question was, you'll see a change now, we've changed. If you see the banners round the club, it's not red anymore, and you know we've looked into this and it shouldn't be any reason, really. But some of the players have mentioned that the split second decision that you have to make, look over your shoulder. If your teammate is there or not. And the red shirt is on the red background just with the red seats makes it difficult. And so we've of course tried to change that along with the campaign, the anti-racism campaign. So of course that was important that wasn't red anymore. But then again, there shouldn't be any reason. And then again, if you've got a 4-0 advantage versus Real Sociedad, you don't have to win that game 0-0. Was a good result. Then the first game against Milan, that's still a draw. We conceded in the last minute. So I still think we've played some good football at home. We started off badly. With the three defeats with Palace, Tottenham and Arsenal early on. So we've improved. So yeah, that's everything that was mentioned during the press conference. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how imperative it is to get his first trophy on the board as Man United manager. Solskjaer has not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager and he's been Man United manager now over two years and we haven't won a trophy since 2017 and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. A club of our stature needs to be winning trophies. Don't forget Solskjaer did say last month that winning trophies can be an ego thing. 
He said that having regards to some other managers and some other clubs. And he just basically said, you know, clubs like Man United, trophies no longer prove success. But I've got to totally disagree with him in that aspect. Don't forget Jose Mourinho hit back at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, reflecting on what Ole said last month. If we win the Europa League, that will mark more progress under Ole. But even if we fail to win the Europa League, we know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will not be sacked as Manchester United manager. So I can assure he'll be here in the summer transfer window and he'll be Man United manager next season. But I think we've got a very good chance of winning the Europa League. We got to the semi-finals last season. We lost 2-1 to Sevilla. We won the Europa League back in 2017 under the Jose Mourinho where we beat Ajax in the final 2-0. And we're more or less into the Europa League semi-finals, so that will be five semi-finals under Solskjaer. I can assure we'll finish in the top four in the league. I think that win against Tottenham recently has secured us a second place finish. We finish second and win the Europa League this season. I'll turn around and say that represents a good season for Man United and that gives us something to build on going on into next season. We progress to the Europa League quarter-final by obviously beating Real Sociedad and AC Milan. You know, we did beat Granada in the first leg 2-0. I thought it was a good performance by Manchester United. You know, two away goals plus a clean sheet. Obviously, the goals came from Marcus Rashford. He scored the first one. It was a lovely goal from Rashford. Good touch and a good finish. And it was a lovely long ball from Lindelof. And Bruno Fernandes scored the second goal from the penalty spot towards the end of the game. Should have actually been more than two because Bruno Fernandes had a good chance just before the penalty, but he didn't convert it. Yeah, from a Granada perspective, they'd have been very disappointed in the first leg because it was a poor performance by them. You know, they offered very, very little going forward. I think their best player in the first leg was Kennedy. Um, he was trying to make things happen, looked dangerous every time he got the ball. He had a few long-range shots, but they were straightforward saves for De Gea. Granada's best chance in the first leg was when Herrera hit the post. Yeah, that's Yangel Herrera. <clears throat> uh, Granada won their last game 2-1. They're currently sitting 8th in La Liga, and their current manager is Diego Martinez. Uh, they've got some players missing. Alberto Soros been out with injury. Uh, Miller's out with injury. Lozano's out with injury. Uh, Pepe Sanchez, he's been out... <clears throat> Uh, Duarte, he's out with injury. I think he's suspended anyway. <clears throat> and Iteke, he's suspended. They've got some good players of Granada. Obviously, they've got Roberto Soldado. <clears throat> he's a former Tottenham player, so he's proven in the Premier League. Um, he's Granada's joint top goal scorer. They've also got George Molina. He's Granada's joint top goal scorer. Uh, they've got Luis Suarez. He's one of their key players. And that uh, Yanga Herrera, he's good. Granada progressed to the quarterfinals of the Europa League by obviously beating Napoli and Mulder. Mulder is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's former club. But yeah, uh, we are coming into this game on the back of a 3-1 win against Tottenham. 
it was a good second half performance by Man United against Tottenham, but I thought the performance was poor in the first half of that game. We come from behind to beat Tottenham because we was 1-0 down. It was a goal from Lucas, sorry, human son. It was Lucas Mora that had got the assist. But I think Lindelof was accountable for Tottenham's goal because he should have cleared it. One of the talking points of the game was Edison Cavani's disallowed goal. I totally disagreed with that goal getting disallowed. It was a very, very good goal from Cavani. Uh, Paul Popper played a part in it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was infuriated why the goal got disallowed. Uh, Solskjaer did actually slam human son after the, after the disallowed goal. So the reason it got disallowed by VAR is because Scott McTominway's hand hit human son, but I can assure it wasn't intentional. So for me, the girl should have stood. Obviously, Mourinho has defended a human son. And obviously, Solskjaer Mourinho had a bust up. But yeah, um, our equalising goal came from Fred. You know, Edison Cavani played a part in that goal because he initially had the shot that forced Hugo Lloris into the safe. Save. Second goal obviously came from Cavani. It was a lovely diving header and it was a great cross by Mason Greenwood. And uh, the third goal came from Mason Greenwood and Paul Popper had got the assist. And I think now Solskjaer's beaten Jose Mourinho twice as Manchester United manager. Um, on my next video, I'll be giving you probably an update on some more transfer news. Uh, obviously, we know that this year's summer transfer window is massive for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Solskjaer's already made his plans for the summer because obviously he had the transfer summer with our recruitment team. Reports said earlier on this season that Man United will spend big in the summer transfer window, but Solskjaer wants to keep transfer dealings quiet. There's a lot of players that we are looking at. I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. Um, and I think quite a few players are going to depart Old Trafford in the summer transfer window as well. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.